out on the outside. What's cracking guys? Omar Esau here. Welcome to my humble abode. Here today to talk about accessory movements, why likely you're doing them wrong. It's not accusatory. In fact, I want to be inclusive with this video. I want to talk primarily to individuals that are focused on hypertrophy or strength in hypertrophy. So let's say you're a power builder. Individuals that are solely focused on strength, this will not apply to them. But essentially, we want to talk about the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe even eighth movement that you do in your workout. So we're talking outside of the primary movement. And I think regardless if your goal is just hypertrophy, we can agree that getting stronger is pretty important. So for the primary movement, trying to lift with maximal intent, so maximal speed, makes sense. So on the bench press, your first movement, if it's chest day, on the squat, if it's a leg day, on the deadlift, if it's a, a leg day, a lower body day, trying to lift the most amount of weight makes sense. But there comes a time and a place where we want to focus on stimulating muscles. And I think it's too reductionist to make this statement, the following statement, that it doesn't really matter how you bench press, it's going to stimulate the same muscles in the same way. Uh, and regardless, your pecs can be activated, your tricep and your deltoid. So it doesn't matter tempo, doesn't matter bar placement, doesn't matter hand position. I think that's far too reductionist and I think it's completely inaccurate. In fact, I want to bring Eric Helms on the channel to talk about some interesting stuff that as the total weight being moved increases on the bench press in particular, the triceps actually become more activated. Just really cool things like that. But let's talk about accessory movements. And the number one rule that I want to stress today is we want to focus on actually targeting the intended area. Often, especially if we like to lift for speed or for strength, will bring some of those habits into the third movement, into the fourth movement. What I mean, a little bit maybe too much momentum. So we do a tricep extension. Instead of focusing on extending the tricep, again, that peak contraction, so really squeezing the actual intended muscle, we're just swinging it up and down. And what do you think is going to elicit a greater hypertrophic response? Focusing on the area, feeling tension in that muscle throughout the entire range of motion, doing the entire range of motion, or swinging haphazardly and using a little bit more weight. So I would make the argument when it comes to accessory movements, we want to focus on feeling the actual muscles at work, the intended muscles, focus on contractions, a full range of motion, and yes, use a little bit less weight, but focus on the above as opposed to maximal intensity. And I think you can approach, once again, a high RPE. If you're doing an isolation movement, it's completely fine. But I think the be all end all quest of lifting the most amount of weight, because one of the metrics that we use to assess progress, so we think to ourselves, okay, we're lifting more weight, therefore we're making progress. But if we're using more weight with sloppier form and we're cutting the range of motion short, that makes no sense. So the golden rule, and I'm speaking because I've been in a lot of commercial gyms, I train out at a fantastic gym at Ford's Fitness, but I see this all too often that we don't take accessory movements seriously. And so if we want to talk about this, the big takeaway would be to feel the contraction. And so I'm going to show you a few differences of what maybe I would typically see in a gym. And also, you know, hey, I'm guilty of this myself. This year I'm focusing on things, I'm breaking it down. I think a great heuristic, which is a dirty fast rule for your primary movement, for your secondary movement. So for movement one and two, Focus on lifting that weight however you can, right? With proper uh, technique that's efficient for your body. Uh, lift the weight, focus on getting stronger. But when it comes to the third movement, so after your first and second movement of the day, we're focusing on keeping the tension in the intended muscles. And this means there's an intent to every single rep, every single set. You're not turning off your brain. You know, sometimes you kind of get in the zone and you just get hyped up, you feel that adrenaline, you, it's like a do or die, uh, and you just start repping it out. And you're really not thinking about anything, and that's where technique becomes sloppy. That's when we cut the range of motion, balancing, let's say, on the bench press. So again, I put that forth, and I think what are what are some of the negatives if you focus on stimulating the actual intended muscles as opposed to using the most amount of weight on accessory moves? Maybe you'll uh, use 2.5 to 5 percent less total weight on those accessory movements, but you're more than making up for it with time under tension, actually stimulating the muscles, greater range of motion, which they've shown, uh, you know, a greater range of motion, all other things being considered. I think on the squat, we can all agree, if you're cutting the squat short, so uh, above 90 degrees, that's not as optimal for quad development than if you went through the full range of motion or least to parallel. We can apply these principles. So I think sometimes when we want to give advice, especially as coaches or when people want to understand things, we tend to oversimplify. So it's a 
reductionist approach. Oh man, just, just do the movements. It doesn't really matter. If you're doing a pull-up, it's already gonna target your back and your biceps. Well, depending upon how you do it, the angle that you target it, just like uh, what we talked about the upper pec when it comes to the incline bench press, the, uh, the degree of that incline could dramatically impact what's being stimulated. So why wouldn't tempo, range of motion, angles, and then actually focus on contracting these muscles have any impact? So. With that being said, in short summary, this is me saying that accessory movements matter. Don't neglect them. Probably more for the strength bros. This applies to uh, those that also want to build some muscle. We focus on maximal velocity. Don't cut anything short. And I think you'd be surprised at the soreness that you achieve. That once again, is that a great indicator of growth? Not necessarily, but I think you'd be surprised at the difference it makes qualitatively in your workout. Anyways, I got to get out of here. I'm here, let's face it, not to film a video. I'm not gonna say why I'm out here because uh, they're listening to me, but you know what's up. Thank you so much for watching this video. We're back every other day. I decided to make this video after observing a few individuals in the gym. No shade, once again, I'm guilty of it too. Something I can improve upon and something I plan on focusing. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like the damn video and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.